Okay, let's start with the last talk of the afternoon with uh, Richard Ehrenberg, and it's uh, pizza and two structure. Thank you, Richard. Thanks so much, Helen. <clears throat> First of all, this is joint work with Sophie Morel and Margaret Reddy, and he is having to support us. So pizza, I'm gonna think about the round disc, and you want to share this between two people, and you want to share it fairly between two people. And here I suggest what you're going to do. You're going to pick a point, an arbitrary point in the pizza, and you're going to cut it with four lines. So it's between two adjacent lines, they're going to be 45 degrees. Then, if you alternate the pieces, the two people will get the same amount of pizza. Is that cute? You should try it out next time you go out. So it was stated as a problem in Math Magazine by Upton, and Goldberg solved it here for an even number of cuts, even number of lines, at least four. Carter and Wagon gave a dissection proof for the four-line case. Here shown, here shown, here shown, here shown, and uh, here shown. <laughs> Looked into the problem of sharing pizza this way among more than two people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It fails for an odd number of lines, and the dissection proofs are for more, for 2K lines there. The classical proof is that you can rotate the lines and see how much the amount of pizza changes. But I want you to think about these four lines this way. And the question you now all have in your mind is the following. <laughs> yes, I failed English literature. <laughs> but I would like to go up in higher dimensions. I have a vector space V. I have a set of unit vectors. For each unit vector, I have the orthogonal hyperplane, and thus I have a hyperplane arrangement. A chamber is a connected component of the complement. And I have to pick a base chamber, such that I can say that this base chamber is going to be where we start counting from, and then I can assign a sign to each chamber from there on. So then the pizza quantity is the following alternating sum, your sum of the chambers, the sign, and the amount of pizza in that chamber. The other thing we have to talk about is coxid arrangement. So I assume most now we all be talking about type A, B, C, D here. So close on the orthogonal reflections in the hyperplanes, and the group should be the finite that you generate. Also, you can take the product of two hyperplane arrangements. And for coxid arrangements, this product is, gives you another coxid arrangement. So here you have, if you now look for the irreducible coxid arrangements under this product, that's exactly what you have now. And let me quickly go through them. Here's type AN, that encodes the symmetry of the simplex. And A1, the simplest one to draw, is a one dimensional space with only hyperplane is the origin. And the arrangement that's going to play a role for us is A1 to the N. And that's going to be the arrangement of the coordinate hyperplanes. Then we have type BN and CN, and for me, they're the same thing, okay? The symmetries of the cube. We have type DN. We have type E6, E7, EN. I'm not gonna tell you what they are. Lucky you. <laughs> and we have type F4, this is my favorite. Then type G, I'm gonna skip. We have type H3 and H4. 
And then we have the dihedral arrangement theorem. The two-dimensional arrangements with K lines. So now, the result by Goldberg can be formulated this way, that we have the hydral arrangement with two, K, with two K lines, K at least two, and then you pick a disk in the plane containing the origin, and then the pizza quantity is equal to zero. Okay, I want to do more interesting things, so a set is convex on the reaction of the group if it doesn't change. Okay. So here's the theorem. I take a coxid arrangement, and I want this condition that the negative of the identity map should be in the coxid group. And I do not want to have the coordinate hyperplanes. I do not want to have A1 to the N. Then if you pick a point A, and you look at the action of the group of A in that convex hull, if that's inside the pizza, then the pizza quantity of this shifted pizza K plus A is equal to zero. So we can go out and share pizza in higher dimensions. Okay. Quick history continued. For balls, this was considered by Fredrickson in the type A1 cross the Heel arrangement. And more recently, Brilov proved it for type Bn. So this condition, that the negative of density map is in the cosmic group, what does it mean? Well, it says that the arrangement is a product arrangement of the, all the following factors as a long list. So it's better to look what's not in the list. So type A for dimensions two and higher is not there. Type D in all dimensions is not there. E6 is not there. And the odd dihedral arrangements are not there. The other thing we have to look at is, what is this special with uh, A1 to the N? The coordinate hyperplane arrangement. Well, to help the picture, let me also draw in the line here that xi equal to 2 ai. And if I draw in those lines, you see how the, how the, all the pieces now can find the piece to match with and cancel out, except for the center piece. So there's the piece of this result for the coordinate hyperplane arrangement. It gives, it gives you this pretty prepared box in the middle. Yeah, the sign is always going to work out that way, since if you think, if you move your point continuously below like the x-axis, it changes the sign, but then also the pizza quantity changes the sign also. So the sign is going to work out. The question is, I think, what is the definition of these sides in this box? Yeah. Can you repeat that? Oh, so, so the signs of the pieces are still according to the coordinate type of planes. Oh. So the, the, these lines, xi equal to 2ai, those help lines doesn't change the signs of one of the pieces. They just help me to see how I'm going to cancel pieces the computing the pizza quantity. So now, having again proved the, this result, well, I'm going to take the pizza and I can move it. I can see what, how it changes, what's the derivative of the pizza quantity. However, Thank you, Ira. How oh, dear you are, okay. <laughs> Do we really need to use calculus? I mean, if I have two sets, I want to show that they have the same volume, the best way is the dissection proof. I, you take one set, you cut it into pieces, and you rearrange them to form the other set, agree? 
That's the way to prove that two sets have the same volume. Okay? Well, to do that, take a nice collection of subsets here of space. And I want to have these quantities that close on the finite intersection. If I move pieces around, they shouldn't, it should still be in the set. If I intersect with a half space, it's still the intersection could be in there. And that would be nice on the Cartesian products. So now I've formed a billion group generated by them. But I also want to now have these properties that the empty set evaluates to zero. So I'm going to put in that relation. I want inclusion and exclusion to hold. And I want it under moving a piece around, that's not going to change the value. So I want to work inside this huge abelian group. So if two things are equal in this group, that means there is a dissection proof to prove that. So the abstract pizza quantity takes place in this abelian group. So the abstract pizza theorem is that we have had the same conditions as before. And this actually now holds in this huge abelian group. It says there is a dissection proof here. How are we going to prove it? Well, we have to go back to root systems, or rather, Note that I'm not doing classical crystallographic root systems. I'm doing pseudo root systems. So these are my conditions I have. And note that, as before, I can divide in my pseudo roots into positive and negative. And here's the important definition by Rebecca Herb. A two structure is a subset of the pseudo roots so that is a disjoining of pairwise orthogonal smaller root systems of type A1, type A2, or the hedral arrangement with the two power number of lines. Then I have the, there's the second condition. And you should think about that condition as it forces the two structure to be maximal, that is in maximality condition. And you must say that Herb introduced this in her study of these things. I don't really know what they are, OK? Number three, your algebraic geometry, so I'm not there yet. One nice thing is that the Coxity group of the whole pseudo root system acts transitivity on the two structures. So they all have the same type. So here's the table how they all look like. And if you look at this table, you notice this, that the, if you look at the rank of the root system and rank of the two structure, they're going to be the same exactly when the negative of the density map sits in the coxity group. So things are actually getting nicely together. Furthermore, a two structure, you can assign a sign to it. It has some nice properties. And I want to point out the second property. It shows you that the sign of the two structure really depends how you picked your positive and negative pseudo roots in the first place. And now, there's the following nice result. So you should think about this way. If you are going to evaluate the pizza quantity for the coxeter system, you can do that by summing over all two structures 
taking the sign of the two structure and then the pizza quantity for that two structure. So what this allows us to do is that instead of working with the whole pizza quantity, we only had to work with the pizza quantities for two structures. And they have a much more easier way to deal with it. So quickly, short proof of the pizza theorem. If the two structure has a factor B2 of one of the dihedral things, we can carefully actually show that the abstract pizza quantity is going to vanish. And this is a complicated proof, moving pieces around like this, okay? So I can spare you the details. For the second case, let me remind you here about the classical wallace bolya german theorem. That is, if you have two polygons in a plane with the same area, you can find a dissection proof. You can find a dissection going from one to the other one. Now, this is not true in higher dimensions, as you know from Hilbert's third problem, but it is true for things we can build up from parallel to tops. So, in the second case here, is that every two structure types A1 to the N, the coordinate hyperplanes. Then if you evaluate it, it's going to be, just like we did earlier, it's going to be that center box of the pizza. But remember now, that's just for that two structure. So what we have is a signed sum of those parapapids. And then, using the wallace bolya german theorem for parallelotopes, we can actually show they can vanish. So that was a quick proof, okay? But it gives us more now, because we did this dissection proof. So if you now instead are not interested in just the volumes of the slices of pizza, but you can do the intrinsic volume instead. I have a mistake. I should write in intrinsic volumes instead. Oh, well. Okay. That also now, you know directly, is going to vanish. So you get a lot of things for free here. So you know, for instance, that if you take the surface area of each slice, that sum is going to alternate and go equal to zero also. Let's talk some other pizza results also, the few last minutes I have. Here's another theorem we are able to prove. Now we have the condition that the number of hyperplanes in the coxity group have the same parity as the dimension we are in. However, <laughs> it contains calculus, okay? The nice thing is it covers a few more coxity arrangements. It covers E6 and covers type A n here in dimensions congruent to C and 1 mod 4. But can we find a dissection proof? We don't know yet. So A n in these things and the odd type D in odd dimensions, those are the irreducible times we need to do more work. Now I can tell you about the Marbury in Diagram result. It tells you the following inequality. Remember here that I'm thinking about T, the chamber, to be open. So the following inequality holds. And for you to digest this, think about it that you have this round pizza, and you've got this vinhedrical arrangement with odd number of lines. And if you want to maximize the amount of pizza you get. In the case m congruent to 3 mod 4, you want to take the piece containing the center of the pizza. 
Whereas, if m is congruent to 1 mod 4, you want your friend to take the centerpiece, the piece containing the center. The Hishon result. They prove that the following result. You cut the pizza with two p lines, so you get a total of four p slices, and then every person has to take the p slice. And that gives a fair division of the pizza. I don't know if they tried this out in practice. Okay? <laughs> okay. But that gives the question, which arrangements for in higher dimensions can we do this for more than two people. And we have a partial answer here for four dimensions and four people. And this is why F4 is my favorite type. Because F4, if you know your root systems, has long and short roots. The long roots form a D4, the short roots form another D4. So you have the nice decomposition here. So now you can actually give three signs to a chamber. The sign is going to have in the F4, the sign is going to have in D4, and the sign is going to have in the other D4. And they're related by the following nice rule. So if you can let the people be, the four people, we can call them plus plus, plus minus, minus plus, and minus minus. And now by using the pizza theorem for h1, h2, and h here, we get the following equalities. And that's an easy linear equation system to solve. And you can show that each of them gets a quarter of the pizza. Thank you very much. Or perhaps, I should say, bon appetit. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Uh, do we and have... there are the references. Yes. Okay. Do we have question for Richard? Can you repeat? Okay. Pizzas over finite fields. I have not thought about pizzas over finite fields. So I don't know. Other question? Yeah, Wick? Great job, Thank you. Any help for like the lattice point counting? I haven't thought about that. So Wick asked about if this can be helpful for the lattice point counting. Well, the abstract pizza theorem, you can apply your, um, instead of taking volume applying to it, I assume you could count lattice points for it also. You're looking for the pepperoni in the pizza here, okay? <laughs> uh, other question? <laughs> Sadly enough, I don't even cook pizza at home, okay? Okay, so I think we're all hungry, but we have to go. <laughs> we first have to go to the poster session. And uh, thank you again, Richard. Thank you much. <laughs>